Can I ask you a question? It's a bit outlandish, but bear with me. Would you pay me $3 to see the gruesome, unedited autopsy photos of a murdered 11-year-old boy? Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, well, what if I told you that I was a true crime YouTuber? <laughs> would that change your mind at all? Hopefully you guys know me well enough to know that I would never give such an indecent proposal. <laughs> at least not in public. Well, apparently a small time true crime YouTuber named Zavgirl does not share the same sensibilities. Zavgirl then proceeded to post them on her Patreon account, which is an account attached to her YouTube page. And she charged her followers money to see the autopsy photos for three dollars you could see little Gannon's body. She was making money off of that little boy's autopsy photos. Autopsy photos of a, a severely beaten to death little boy. Gannon Stock was brutally murdered by his stepmother, Letitia Stock. When investigators looked through her computer, they discovered several Google searches of her attempting to figure out how to defeat a polygraph test, even attempting to get one herself of the questions that she might be asked if she was charged with his murder. And she was even looking into getting plastic surgery so that she could evade police. She would originally try to say that she was kidnapped and sexually assaulted, even going as far as to say that her stepson Gannon was also sexually assaulted. But all of that would turn out to be a lie along with many, many other stories that she tried to tell. Her insanity plea did not hold up and ultimately the autopsy would prove that she stabbed Gannon several times before shooting him point blank in the head, putting him in a suitcase and throwing him into a river. Ultimately, she was given life in prison. There's a genre of YouTuber who really enjoys telling these stories in full, and I am not part of that genre, though I am a huge true crime fan, I guess you could say. But this particular story was fascinating to me because it brought up a lot of questions that I think people are starting to ask themselves about the ethics of true crime content. There's an entire industry around these very gleeful retellings of these incredibly brutal events. And for me, even as a person who enjoys true crime, that aspect of it has always kind of given me the ick. Because I guess even though I am fascinated with some of these stories and the reasons why they happen and you know how people get into these situations, I still recognize that as not the best way to talk about some of this stuff. And in this particular situation, we do actually see how his family responds to people like Zev Girl taking their family tragedy and turning it into entertainment. Yeah, and I think for me, like what really pushed it over the edge was the charging the money. Um, I mean, obviously posting it alone would be disgusting, but then charging money to see those photos, it's just, it's really, really just awful. I, the word I use to describe it is evil, Brian. Uh, in my my opinion, it's just evil. Like we, we, the world got enough information from the trial to have every discussion they want to have. Why do we need to go have a freedom of information request and pay for this kind of information and then dishonor my son by putting these photos out there like that? I mean, the world got to see it. I, I don't know how well you followed it, but the only day I chose not to come to the trial was the day that they showed the autopsy photos. Now I feel like I can't even go on YouTube without the possibility of accidentally coming across these photos. Okay, so personally, I really don't even understand how she thought this was okay. Obviously, I think that there's an explanation, which I'll get to a bit later, but I think when I heard about this the first time, it just shocked me because there's so many steps you'd have to go through before you would get these pictures. She apparently was able to get them through the Freedom of Information Act, and you know she had to compile them and put them together and put them on Patreon. And I guess for me, there's just several steps along this process that would tell me that maybe I shouldn't be the one doing this. Now, when people first started calling her out, she initially got very, very defensive and decided to essentially go on her community page and argue that some people are able to objectively look at these brutal autopsy photos. She kept saying that she was able to look at them in an unemotional way, essentially. And for me, that is the exact problem. 
I think what becomes kind of clear in some true crime content is this idea that the people who make this content aren't often really thinking about the people behind the stories that they're telling and the fact that their families are going to have to, whenever they search up their family members dying, see these videos of people cheerfully speaking about their deaths. Obviously, most people recognize it as something that should not have happened, something that's tragic, you know, that she lit up the room or whatever. People who are true crime, you know, people have heard those comments all the time. But at the end of the day, there is something to be said about the callous nature of feeling so comfortable treating these stories like entertainment. And as I said, I'm guilty of it. I would just think that the death of a child is sensitive enough for people to maybe think that maybe they shouldn't make content like this or upload stuff like this. But for me, her feeling so comfortable with doing this really speaks to the detachment that a lot of people have to the reality that these are real people who have families that are alive and would feel a certain way if you talk about them a certain way. Now, I think one of the reasons why I also wanted to talk about this is because um, I've mentioned it in passing in the past two videos of mine, but my mother recently passed away. Um, She died very unexpectedly. And because I'm the oldest and because my father and my brother have their own health issues that they have to deal with, I'm the person who has to take care of everything. And I had to, unfortunately sit with my mother after death and view her body. And that was the first time I've ever been in front of a dead body. And I'll say that it didn't shock me as much as I was expecting it to. I think it's because it was my mom and because I'm familiar with her and because I love her. It was hard for me to see her like that. That was my mom in her most vulnerable and indefensible position ever. Right now we are waiting to get the death certificate. We don't really know what the cause of death is. Uh, I'm probably going to assume that it wasn't, you know, any malpractice or anything crazy like that. But let's say that it is. Let's say that this became something where people were looking into the death of my mother and trying to find her autopsy photos. And somebody was, you know, taking those pictures and putting those pictures on the internet and charging people money. Like that thought repulses me and makes me incredibly angry, especially because that would be her at her most vulnerable, indefensible position. This was a child that got murdered before it was his time to go, right? And so the idea of that, especially not being something that bothers her, really bothers me. And I think that speaks to some people's detachment from Again, the reality of all of this, the very thought that I would have to at some point deal with some people who are just looking for entertainment, looking at her dead body is just so viscerally upsetting to me. And I feel like I might not have really, really felt that way until I lost my mom. Here's a person who I love, who I care so much about, who I know cared so much about me, and she's sitting in front of me dead. It is If you've ever been in that situation, it is one of the hardest things ever. And the idea of those photos floating around, it makes me incredibly angry. Now, Zev Girl would go and upload an apology, and I've not seen this apology. We're going to watch it together. I was really curious what she could say about this because like I said when people were first calling her out she did nothing but essentially run defense for herself so we're gonna watch this apology video and I'm going to give you the rest of my thoughts all right this is called my apology to Gannon's family and everyone hurt and it currently sits at 46k views now before we get into this I wanted to say this The one thing that I noticed when I was looking at her channel is she mostly compiles evidence from these cases. And also, I know as a YouTuber looking at her numbers that she can't possibly be making a lot of money from this. So I know that her Patreon was probably the way that she was 
making money. Now, when I went to go find her Patreon, it had actually been removed. So I imagine that all of this probably resulted in her getting her Patreon removed. But Patreon for a lot of creators is the way that we make stable income. It is an easier way for us to make a large chunk of money and, you know, something that we could maybe rely on every month. It is the reason why I am full time. Which, by the way, I also have a Patreon page that you should totally support because I, at the bare minimum, don't do this. I may upload a lot of videos of me talking about my personal life, especially the past couple of weeks, um, but I don't upload 11-year-old autopsy photos. So there's that. I guess I got that going for me. But anyway check out my Patreon. But back to this, I think that she was probably able to get a lot of people go over to her Patreon. I think that that was the strategy. But anyway, let's watch this apology. Let's see what she says. I'm very, very curious how she processed this from that post that she did on our community page. Hi, everyone. If you're listening to this, then you likely know about the last few days. I want to apologize to everyone I've hurt, but especially Cannon's family. I've been doing some major soul searching and reflecting. There are many trying to define my motivations. And while I'm not looking for forgiveness or trying to make excuses, I do hope to provide additional context that has not been made clear. I have followed the Letitia Stout case closely, and it was actually during the trial that I made the official records request. And it was in El Paso County, Colorado. I requested all the video, audio, and written records. I made no request for autopsy photos. I wanted all trial records, but my main interests were interviews with Letitia. The autopsy photos just happened to be in the files. I spent time reviewing what I received so I could provide more info from the trial. I believe many of my images were already shown during the televised trial, and I saw the photos on other public YouTube channels that live streamed the trial and shared the evidence. I didn't think any of the images were new. These photos were already public, Although the video I put together with the coroner's voice was my own creation. I chose to put the video on Patreon because of the sensitive nature of the evidence. <sighs> Putting the evidence behind a paywall meant added security. And I naively thought they wouldn't be made public. The video I created with a voice from the coroner wasn't meant to be shared outside of Patreon. And I chose not. All right, I'm, I'm going to keep watching this. But, but uh, this is the sort of shit that bothers me because... She's so comfortable with this. In her mind, all of this is normal. And I understand, again, I'm a person who watches true crime content. I get the idea of collecting evidence and going over the evidence. Like, I understand the appeal. I understand why people do that. But, like, why are you so comfortable doing it, right? For me, that's a question worth asking, because at the end of the day, you really shouldn't feel so comfortable assembling these videos and these posts to upload to your Patreon for people who want to really do research that they are not qualified to do. This is another thing that really bothers me about a lot of true crime folks. They act like they are detectives, like they are people that are investigating the case that are in any way helping the case. And I get it. Again, there's the intrigue and the appeal of maybe being somebody who would, um, you know, find out what really happened. But at the end of the day, you don't fucking know. You don't know. You are not an investigator. It doesn't really matter what the context is. You should absolutely not be doing that. And I, I love how she's like, oh, you know, I didn't mean to get the autopsy photos. They just came along with and oh, all these other pictures are public already. And yeah, I put them on page Patreon because they're, you know, sensitive. But none of that actually matters because you shouldn't be doing this to begin with. You really shouldn't be. You really, 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 really shouldn't be. The video I created with a voice from the coroner wasn't meant to be shared outside of Patreon. And I chose not to put the photos on YouTube, a public forum, where the views would have allowed me to make more money and the photos would be seen by more people. Because the video was placed behind a paywall, rumors about the images not being blurred or being different than what was shown in trial started to surface. No photos shows genitalia. I have made no jokes about the photos. I don't even cuss on my channel. And I would never allow derogatory remarks about a victim. I realize my intent... Okay, so you don't cuss, you you know, you don't allow derogatory d remarks about the victim, but you're still sharing the autopsy photos. Like, 
to me, it's it's so interesting the way that you would categorize these things. Don't curse, but do share pictures of a dead child. It's a very bizarre line to draw in the sand, frankly. It is an incredibly bizarre line to draw in the sand. I think the pictures of the dead body, whether they include genitalia or not, are enough to say that you've crossed the line. Tensions were not communicated well. My channel style is sort of me hanging out with friends and speaking off the cuff, and I did not articulate my reasons or think my decision through. At this time, my Patreon website has been shut down. I am not sharing any of the photos or video anywhere, although you can see the photos published on other popular channels. Nothing you see is from me, nor will it ever be. To those who have supported me and followed my channel, and to the true crime Thank community, you. I'm sorry I let you down. Okay. <laughs> I cannot imagine the pain Gannon's family has gone through. My anger over what happened to Gannon is the reason I started following the case. I'm not this evil, heartless person like many are saying, but I'm also doing a lot of self-reflecting, and I'm looking into sensitivity training. I did not want to add to the family's loss with anything I said or shared about this case. And it will be a long time before I ever trust myself or my decisions again. To Gannon's family, I have no words that can make this better. No one should have to ever go through what you guys have been through. I'm so very sorry for any pain that I have caused you. Okay, I guess that's it. I guess that's the whole thing. So here's the question. Do we forgive her? There's a part of me that wants to say everybody has the possibility of not understanding that what they did was wrong. But I think that you should really like take a minute to process that this didn't stand out as a great wrong. Like I can buy that maybe she didn't mean it. Maybe it wasn't intended in that way. But at the same time, again, I'm just stuck on this fact that all of these steps were taken and at no point did she think this wasn't a good idea. Why do you got to post the pictures at all? Why? Like, I hear what she's trying to say. You know, I would have made more money if I posted it on YouTube, but you wouldn't have really. I mean, you would have probably made as much money doing that on YouTube as you would have on Patreon because it turns out in both contexts, you can't really post that stuff. But anyway, I I just wanted to talk about this because similar to the Colleen Ballinger ukulele thing, this is something on YouTube that I think is so strange and so bizarre and only comes from having this like weird sense of disconnect from humanity. That's something that I keep coming back to. My sense of humanity would say, I wouldn't want to do that to anyone in my family. So why would I do that to somebody else's? I don't understand why that wouldn't be something that she would think about. So I think as of now, we don't actually know what's gonna happen. Apparently this did lead to her having some legal struggles, I believe with the family, though I'm not 100% sure. I mostly just wanted to talk about this because I thought it was so bizarre. Again, there are so many steps that you would have to, you have to take before you upload those pictures to Patreon that I'm shocked that at no point she said to herself, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. Anyway, I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this particular topic. So please remember to leave your thoughts in the comment box below. As per usual, I will talk to you guys next time. And I want you to always remember and to never forget that you are beautiful and you are loved. Unless you're this Zav girl person. Bye.